A distress signal has been detected in an isolated low-lying group of islands in the Tonga archipelago. Now, it was following Saturday's massive volcanic eruption and tsunami, the United Nations said, prompting a particular concern for its inhabitants. Initial reports suggested no mass casualties on the main island of Togaptapu, but two people were reported missing. The capital, Nuku Alofa, was badly damaged as were resorts and homes along the island western beaches. We are, of course, in contact through our High Commissioner in Nukalofa, uh, but communications are very restricted. Uh, we are seeking further information about uh, the extent of the damage outside Nukalofa itself. Uh, but today we have been able to deploy a Royal Australian Air Force P-8 uh, to undertake surveillance activity uh, over, the, uh, over the affected area, working very closely with New Zealand, who I understand have deployed one of their P-3s, uh, to work on that surveillance activity themse themselves. Uh, this is a very challenging time. Communications are deeply, deeply affected uh, by the events of the volcanic eruption. It has been felt uh, in other parts of the region. Uh, we know ourselves. Uh, here in Australia, we have seen the effects on our own coastline. And we have joining us now Dr. Robin George Andrews. He's an award-winning science journalist. And of course, he has written Time Lord. And he's the author of Super Volcanoes, What They Reveal About the Earth and the World Beyond. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great. Can you walk us through what's happened in Tonga and what's really unique and different about this particular tsunami and the volcanic eruption? Yeah, so um, so this kind of eruption started out quite normally for this sort of submarine oceanic eruption. Where you have all these islands in the area and they're all volcanic to some degree and they tend to erupt explosively. Um, but uh, the explosion we saw on Saturday was thought to be like a one in a thousand year event. Um, and, you know, the, the eruptions leading up to that were kind of like the magma chamber just leaking a little bit. Um, but... The magma chamber was so full at that point that, you know, something push came to shove and the whole thing kind of exploded. Um, that's what created that really big blast. It's not clear what caused the tsunami specifically, but the fact that it happened immediately after this big explosion is not a coincidence. But scientists are trying to work out whether part of the volcano collapsed underwater or there was an underwater explosion as well. Um, but that's still uh, to come kind of thing. But the hope is now that after that giant explosion, uh, the worst is over. And it's kind of remarkable that there wasn't actually, a, um, there hasn't been more devastation really, because mm. I think that was one of the biggest explosions of the 21st century. There was a shockwave and it went around the world. So it was pretty big. <laughs> Interesting. Is that the only location where the you know eruption took place, or were there multiple eruptions in other places? Did it did it reverberate in surrounding areas? We see that Fiji is surrounded by Australia, and New Zealand, on the other hand. So mm -hmm. did they feel the shocks from those parts? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the the tsunami did sort of spread around the Pacific Ocean. In fact, the shock the shock wave from the blast uh, was so powerful that it actually created a small tsunami in the in the Caribbean. Um, and uh, that's a really rare thing to see. I think that's the first time it's ever been uh, recorded as coming from a volcano, that kind of um, trans-oceanic tsunami. So there were like regional, massive like um, regional uh, effects. Um, but in terms of other volcanoes, it was just this uh, volcano that was erupting. Volcanoes don't really have an effect on each other. So this volcanic eruption was kind of isolated. And I think it, it looks like it's petering out now. It's kind of slowing down, but um, scientists obviously still keeping an eye on it just in case, um, because uh, you, volcanoes can kind of pick up again, even after a big bang. But yeah, hopefully the worst is over. Mm. Well, I saw a post that you put up on Twitter talking about it, you know, breaking lightning records. What's that about? <laughs> yeah, so volcanic lightning happens when you have particles of ash that like, bump into each other, and that kind of creates uh, friction, which creates electricity, like that kind of uh, like if you rub a balloon on a jumper and then put it on your head kind of thing, it can stick. It's the same kind of science behind it. And if you have ash bumping into ice particles, that can create a lot of um, electricity too. Uh, so eruptions at sea often uh, have quite a lot of lightning uh, going on, um, partly because the explosive nature of them when the magma meets the water kind of creates so much ash uh, that it can kind of create lots of electricity. 
But scientists aren't quite sure why it created so much. So mm. um, at one point, it was creating 200,000 lightning strikes uh, an hour, which is easily a record. It was, it's the, it's the most, it, it was the most electric point on the planet, one scientist told me at one point. So mm. um, it, it's quite extraordinary. But no one's quite sure why that was yet. Yeah, we hear that Tonga needs international support following, you know, the massive eruption and the tsunami, uh, although the full extent of the damage is yet to be assessed. So also there have been warnings of invisible toxic gas over the vicinity. What's the implication of that toxic gas over the vicinity? Will it one way or the other affect the evacuation process? Um, I, I think the toxic gas problem, I'm not entirely sure, um, but because it hasn't really come up, but I suspect that the other islands are far away enough that the gas isn't necessarily a problem because it will have dispersed by that point. Um, really, the ash fall is going to be a huge problem. I've seen satellite images before and after of, of islands, and apart from the fact that a large number of settlements have been washed away by the tsunami, the ash fall is going to be a problem for things like agriculture, and it, it short circuits you know, power lines, it blocks up sanitation. It really can take a long time to clear, so there's no doubt about it. This is a horrific disaster for Tonga, especially it's a, a nation of uh, maybe 100,000 people. It's just, you know, n any country nearby this would have been kind of fairly devastated by this sort of eruption. But the fact that it's quite a small nation makes it kind of even more acute. So, uh, yeah, hopefully they get all the aid that they, they need as quickly as possible. Well, I want to say thank you, Dr. Robin George Andrews is an award-winning science journalist. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.